Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the fifth episode of Kinyarel Mosaic. Now, I've decided to use this series to try out kind of a new format, of, a new way of doing things, uh, because this is kind of just a little... This anime in general is one of those things I just kind of wanted to react to just for kind of... Uh, I don't want to say selfish reasons, but it's kind of an impulse thing where I just I felt like reacting to an old series that I loved a lot, so I'm kind of using it to maybe to, to test something out. And basically this new format I'm going to try out is where uh, on YouTube, uh, you know with my reactions how I uh, do my quick little intro, I watch it, and then I talk about it afterwards? Well, I'm thinking of with this, just taking that part where I talk about it afterwards, putting that on YouTube, and then the actual live reaction itself goes on to a different website that won't immediately, you know, just lock it on copyright grounds and whatever it does. That's kind of what I'm thinking with this. So, yes, I just kind of want to test out doing that sort of format with this. Uh, I I thought about maybe calling the, the just a YouTube video review, but I really can't in good conscience do that. So I'll probably just call it reaction. And then in the video itself, I say something about, hey, if you this is my reaction to it, but if you want to see my live reaction to it, which is different than a regular reaction, <clears throat> then you can just click on the link in the description. It will take you to that on a different website. So yeah, I'm just trying out this format with this with this series. Uh, just let me know if, what your thoughts on it are in the comment section below. I know there are pros and cons, but I do think there's mostly pros to it. Like being able to pause the video that I'm watching and rewind it if I if I miss something and stuff like that. The only real downside is that it's for the people that want to tightly control, you know, my audio versus the what I'm reacting to his audio and stuff like that. That will no longer be an option, real a real option. That's the only real downside, but I think it's probably better for majority of people, more convenient for pretty much everyone involved. It's just that you know. Reactions are very much a gray area as far as copyright goes, and the law hasn't quite caught up with that. But anyway, uh, as far as let's get into the actual, you know, uh, talking about the show now. So this episode, it was basically a big sister of the episode. We got some stuff with Aya, uh, with, well, Shinobu and, and uh, Yoko, really. Shinobu Yoko is kind of where it all started because she actually called Yoko Bonechan, which I guess happens sometimes. I, I don't see it happen a lot in anime, actually calling someone that, but... It happens, but Shinobu was really on a, a, a roll there because he went immediately from that to calling her teacher mom or whatever, so that was pretty great. I'm sure Yoko didn't mind being called that because, as we learned throughout the episode, Yoko is kind of a big sister type character for Shinobu because she helped her out back, back <clears throat> uh, way back when because she was lost and confused without her big sister and looking for her sister in the trash, which I got a, a kick out of, really. Like, big sister, are you in there? I know you're trash, so clearly you'd be in the trash can. That was pretty funny. I, I'm kidding, you, uh, Iyasa, I, Isami, whatever your name was. I love you a lot, even if I don't remember your name. So don't, I, I'm not trash talking to you or anything. I just, it's just funny. But yeah, Yoko just doing her best to help out the little Shinobu, and they became close friends, and then Yoko kind of, you know, helped her out from there. I mean, I was going to say Yoko helped her become friends with Shinobu, but I uh, with Aya, but I think Shinobu approached Aya herself, didn't she? So, yeah, but the point is the big sister theme was kind of the big thing of this episode. We found out that Isami was kind of a, a sis, has kind of a sister complex. Not really all that surprising. Or, you know, uh, I, I, I can't blame her. She has some pretty great sisters now. Uh, Shinobu and now Alice. As far as all of her friends as well. There's a lot come over to play. Let's see. What else I what else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, the finger poking in the faces was pretty funny. But yeah, eventually we came over to Shinobu's house, which we all got to meet Isami, which this was the first time for uh, for Karen. So it was pretty funny. Like suddenly her Japanese was a lot better when she was talking to Isami. That was pretty funny. Definitely kind of a fangirl there, which is pretty pretty cute. And they just hung around, you know, having fun. Uh, he's dead. Shinobu kind of needs some help with her work, so they kind of wanted to have a bit of a study group. I think that was the reason why they came over to her house. Because seriously, how do you get a zero, Shinobu? Seriously, is, is nothing going on upstairs uh, besides her love of blondes and foreigners? And apparently she wears a maid outfit at home, because why not? I guess there was technically a character in Kobayashi Maid Dragon that did that too. But they look better in it than Shinobu does. She's never going to look good in foreign clothes, no matter how hard she tries. Oh yeah, yeah, might though. So too bad she never got to, got to wear it, so that's... <clears throat> a bit unfortunate. But, you know, they had a lot of fun. Uh, Karen's stumbling across Isami's room and her camera. and like, no, no, I, I, I didn't see anything. I didn't mean to touch it. Please don't call the police. That was funny. Did she really think Isami would do that? That's, no, she wouldn't do that. So you can calm yourself a little bit. Let's see. And then we had kind of a photo shoot outside with with uh, Ayaya and Yoko being kind of silly, like not being wanting to take a picture so close to such a you know, a beautiful, famous model, so they go, like, 20 feet back, and then they take the picture. That's uh, pretty funny, almost like she has cooties or something. 
and and you had Conan making paper airplanes out of out of Shinobu's treasure. You have uh, one of the really funniest scenes was when Conan was walking through the hallway carrying some heavy stuff, and Yoko was like, "Hey, you you want some help? I'm a big strong girl, the tomboy of the group. I I can help you out. So you want me to do that? Oh sure, that'll be that'll be great. So and so I know that made that meant that Yoko was carrying Conan herself in addition to what she was carrying. That was probably the funniest moment of the entire episode. That really got me. I did not see that coming at all. That was that was really funny. Uh, yeah, nothing more to say on it beyond that. What else did we get? Oh yeah, I talked about uh, some sister stuff, but what I haven't got into yet was Yoko and Isami's relationship. Isa Yoko actually wants a big sister figure in her life because she's mostly as younger siblings, and Isami was more than welcome to be there for her, so we had some really cute scenes between them, kind of see when she started to call her Isane, and just really really good relationship <laughs> there blossoming with the head padding and everything it was really nice to watch and then you have the, the teacher actually referring to her older brothers as Wanee Chan which is also really cute how she looked all embarrassed and turned around like <clears throat> no I I'm gonna be professional now everyone be quiet okay I'm a teacher I, I must be professional that's pretty good too I do think that's really about it though uh oh the pie chart no I gotta talk about the pie chart <laughs> the pie chart was funny uh Shinobu she Yoko's pie chart was basically just Tsukomi. She's a Tsukomi character. She's a straight man. She just, you know, that's that's what she does. And that is kind of her role in the, in the show, I guess. But she's also the waifu of Aya, yeah. So she kind of is, that's a big role for her as well. As well as just being the big sister of the group, really, if you don't count Yusami. Because she's not in the same class, so she can't be class big sister. That's kind of for Yoko. And I liked how happy she was when uh, Kauden, after doing a lot of research, decided she wasn't just 100% Tsukomi. She was actually 50% kindness, Yasashi, and 50% Tsukomi. Uh, retort girl, whatever they called it. So yeah, that was... I like how happy she was. Like, as long as she wasn't completely Tsukomi, she was okay with being partially it. So that was pretty great. Although I think I liked Ayaya's better. Uh, it was like 5%... Uh, what was it? It was 5%... Uh... Wow, I'm, I'm blanking on what the others were, but the important one was the 90% uh, Yoko. That was that was great. It's like, no way, it's 0% or like 5% at most. I totally don't love you or anything, Baka. So Aya is just, her Sudere is, as always, on point. Oh, and Cotton calling Yoko a convenience store was pretty funny too. And we had, oh, the arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Uh, Alice wanted arm wrestle Yoko for whatever reason, and that was never going to end any other way besides Yoko smashing her into oblivion, but... Yoko couldn't quite bring herself to break poor Alice, so she was like, Oh no, you got me! Oh no, you're so strong, Alice! Uh, good job! I could take on a bear! I'm not a bear! I, yeah, that was that was pretty silly. But yeah, Alice, don't don't take on the bear. I don't think they'll end well. So yeah, Armistice is always an excuse to hold hands, so I definitely approved of that scene in general. And that nice little moment where we had pretty close faces with Ayaya, and Yoko was good too. Also, uh, what was it that made Aya really happy earlier in the episode? I'm trying to remember. Uh, what was it? I don't know. Yoko said some, some sort of compliment to Aya that really made her happy and she's just beaming. Oh, I think it was something about her being a good wife. That's what it was. And yeah, that that's that's the kind of thing you want to hear from your waifu. So definitely really happy about that. Just the happiest she's looked in a while. So... Yeah, I think that's really all about it. Like I said, let me know what you think about this new format. So there's some issues with doing this format, like the fact that the website I use to redirect doesn't really have a, a way I do unlisted videos, which is kind of a problem for my early access stuff. So that's a bit of an issue. So I don't know. Just let me know what you think. So yeah, see you next time. Thank you for watching, and thank you Snoki, as well as everyone else, for doing what you can to support the channel. It means a lot to me, and I hope we can continue to grow the channel together. If you want to do more to support the channel, then you can become a patron on my Patreon and get cool rewards like early access to certain videos. Have a good one.